Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Big shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. That number is growing every single day and I really appreciate it. I love talking with everyone in the comments and the community tab up there. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom, and yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. It's been absolutely awesome so far. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through. It would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people on the YouTube interwebs. It really does. So give it a good old thumbs up. Also, little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. That is why my number one golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. And yes, we don't like to lose, but you can lose money in the blink of an eye like that in crypto, all right? So please be careful out there. Do your own research and due diligence. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Yes, I'm absolutely freezing at the moment. In Melbourne, we have got like this Arctic wind coming from Antarctica, which is just really annoying. It's freezing. I'm the only one in the office at the moment, literally the entire building because it's Saturday. Um, and again, it's really cold. So if you're up north or you're in a beautiful part of the world right now, comment below if it's summer and you've got like 30 to 40 degree weather, centigrade, not Fahrenheit, centigrade, um, send it to me because it's really cold. I'm sick of the cold. Um, we've got like record breaking snow in our mountains right now in Mount Buller and Mount Hotham here in, uh, in Australia. So uh, crazy stuff. Anyway, let's have a look here. I put up a post in my community tab. And yes, I love talking with everyone in these comments. So uh, feel free to comment in there. I'll talk back with you. Um, again, I try and delete all the, the uh, spam bot comments as well. By the way, there's so many. It takes me like an hour, over an hour to delete them all. But the most valuable asset we have is time. That's facts right there. I remember I just saw a tweet this morning. Somebody posted up if you had the opportunity to trade uh, with Warren Buffett, who currently has you know $100 billion, but he's 91 years old. Would you trade for that $100 billion? Obviously, but you would have to be 91 years old. Would you do that? No, because he hasn't got much time. So many people have said that, and that's facts right now. So again, I want to see everybody, you know, you know, this is what we're all doing here is investing into cryptos and stocks and, you know, other stuff as well, real estate, because it's eventually it's going to pay off, you know, and obviously give us the ability to not give up our time to earn money. That's the whole aim of the game of this. This is the whole name of the game straight up. This is the reason why we're doing it to get back our time. I mean, this is why it's important to focus on real utility projects, investments, um, and to generate as much income as possible without the need for giving up our precious time. All right. Anyway, enough of my rant. Thoughts on this. I did see a tweet. And yes, I have watched the David Schwartz video on Thinking Crypto channel, which is awesome, by the way, um, in relation to the private XRP ledger. But someone tweeted out this and I just put it up in the community tab to see what people's thoughts were on it. Um, basically, it's saying that this is not a price prediction. XRP is going to hit $1,000 because our people are using the private XRP ledger. And right now, XRP is trading at the price level of $1,000. US Again, I wouldn't, I can't confirm that. I can't deny that. I, don't, I need to look into it further, of course. But again, that's on the XRP private ledger as well, which again is used by banks and institutions and the retail investors inside of things don't have a look into that. So it's very fascinating. I'd love to get a look into that. I'm going to dig as much as possible and do as much research on this. I know David Schwartz said it would be the same price as at XRP at the moment, the retail price. We actually don't know because it's a private ledger and I'd like to get a look into that. So I am going to keep digging on this because we never know the real truth and utility of XRP really when you think about it. We don't know it just yet. It's yet to be discovered and yet to be fully implemented around the world as well once we get clarity from this stupid SEC lawsuit that's going on at the moment. Anyway, there isn't any um, altcoins in my portfolio that are up today as well, by the way. So again, let's go to have a look at CoinSpot. There is a referral link below for CoinSpot. Please feel free to use that if you are new to cryptos in Australia. Please feel free to do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. And again, all these prices are in Australian dollars. My coin market cap is set to US dollars because I'm catering for everybody. Australian, USD, 
Everybody, I wish I could do all currencies, but I'd be here for about four days doing the video. Anyway, let's have a look at the prices in Australian dollars. $42,000 Bitcoin. You've got $2,400 uh, Ethereum right now. Cardano's at 85 cents. You've got XRP uh, sitting at 56 cents, which, which again is incredibly cheap for what the coin's actually built for. And again, I've seen so many comments on why are you pushing Ripple and XRP so much on your channel? Why? Because I believe in the project. I believe in it. I'm not paid by them. I just believe in the project. I've seen the utility of this project. I've seen what can be done. I'm seeing what you know it's it's aiming to achieve, which I want a piece of that. Only because banks and institutions have had control over people for so many years. I'm just sick and tired of being you know one of these retail retail investors that always you know is behind the banks. I'd love to get a one up on the banks. And this is the system that they're all using and implementing right now. And there's so many banks around the world are using this. So why would I not invest in it? That's just my, my opinion anyway, by the way, not financial advice, but I'm so bullish on it. We haven't even seen the full utility of XRP and Ripple yet. That's facts. We haven't. Moving on. We'll get into some other stuff about the case as well. Solana's at $54. Dogecoin, $0.11. Cents. Polkadot's at $12. Tron's $0.11 cents right now. You've got Shiba Inu down 3% as well. I'm still holding that. Maddox uh, at $0.88. Cents. I was buying this at like 3 to $4 a few months back. So, I mean, last year. Anyway, so I'm, I'm taking a massive hit on that. Crows at $0.24. Cents. Link's at $12. That's definitely one I'm eyeing off right now. Stellar's at $0.19. Cents. There is some other updates now in regards to MoneyGram. With Stellar, we'll get into that in a second. New Protocols at $6. Now, that is looking really good for a buying right now. It really is. Uh, if it drops down any level now, I'm going to be filling up my bags with that. Algorand's at $0.54. Cents. VeChain is at $0.04 cents right now. The price even um, hasn't moved considering the UFC partnership and marketing partnership. Again, I'm still bullish on it just for the utility. And I've been talking about VeChain for a long time. And I think it's got incredible utility with logistics and supply chain, not just the UFC partnership as well, which is going to help eventually when it gets put on all the, uh, the Octagon as well. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, Hedera is at $0.12. Cents. ICP is up slightly to $9. This I remember this being like at 140 I don't know about this one. I don't think it's going to hit back up to that all-time high. Uh, you've got uh, Theta at $2 as well. I was buying that at like $14, so I'm down massively on that one. Axe Infinity is at $26. I was buying that at like $80, so I need to get back up there. You've got the Graph at $0.20. Cents. IOTA's at $0.47. Cents. NEO's at $16. FTM's at $0.45. Cents. Waves, $10. Quant is at $89. Now, this is getting good right now because if it drops down slightly, I'm going to add some Quant into my portfolio because it is a banking coin. Definitely want to add. Let's have a look here. Zill is at six cents. I was trading this on three commas. That's pretty much it. Other than that, I've still got the deals going. They're down so much that they're just sitting there at the moment. So that's pretty much it for Zill. Gale is at 10 cents. You've got XDC up slightly to 0.52% today to five cents as well. Bullish on XDC as well. Now, if we move on to crypto bubbles, let's have a look here and see what's going on. Now, if we wait for this, WeMix is up 12% today. It is up 1,607% on the year. I am definitely going to look into this one. Um, I think that's insane. 12% on the day, 2.8% on the week, 130% on the month. Can this keep going up? Who knows? I'm going to look into it. Those numbers are just ridiculous, by the way. I mean, that's just insane. So we'll have a look at Wemix. Osmo's down slightly, you know, to 5.3% today. It was absolutely pumping yesterday. So again, I, I think there was some hack that went on with this as well. And the money actually got returned, which is nice. I'll, I'll look into that as well. But I saw some tweets about that. Uh, what else we got here? Link's down 11% today. I'm bullish on Link. Uh, what else we got here? GMT's down 7% as well. Uh, what else we got here, ladies and gentlemen? Matic is down 7.3% as well. On the week, it's still up 3.5%. Anyway, moving on. Some bullish news. Another win for Ripple as the court denies the SEC's motion to seal. I mean, this whole case with the SEC is absolutely ridiculous. And I was watching David Schwartz in an interview as well just a month ago. Um, and he's right what he was saying, that the only country in the entire world that has declared XRP a security is the United States um, and the SEC. And actual fact, US regulators, the CFTC actually you know, made a, um, 
a ruling that XRP is a virtual currency. And you can go check that up. I've covered that on my, on my channel as well. It's just ridiculous what they're doing. They're stifling, they're hindering technology and growth in the United States. And again, David Schwartz even said that he's had numerous people from crypto companies come up to him and basically say that, yeah, we'd love to do this, but we're not going anywhere near the United States because of the uncertainty. And he did say in that interview as well, like, you know, that the discussions he's had with other people in crypto in this space are basically like, well, we can start this, but the uncertainty of, you know, the SEC coming up to us and saying, you should have known that this was a security and blah, 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 blah. They just don't want that. So they're going offshore, you know, Dubai, Japan, Australia, you know, um, Canada, Europe, Switzerland, Geneva, all these countries around the world. Um, you know, it's just crazy to see what they're doing. It's horrible. Anyway, this is another win for Ripple, guys. As bullish as anything. The ongoing legal battle in the Securities and Exchange Commission and blockchain company Ripple has taken another twist after the present presiding judge denied the regulatory agency's motion to seal. So the court's documents shared by Ripple Defense Attorney James K. Filan on June 9th indicate that the SEC was ordered to file a redacted version of the brief and exhibits as stipulated by the law. The redacted version of the brief and filing is set for a deadline of June 14th and will focus only to the extent of necessary to safeguard information sought to be filed under seal. So again, they just seriously do not want anything coming out, guys. It's unbelievable. The court has ordered this now. So the court is denies the SEC's motion to seal and orders to be filed by June 14th, which is uh, literally next week. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. So this is what it basically says. Essentially, the court agreed with Ripple on this, which is nice. Finally, 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 finally. And said that the SEC was trying to seal more than necessary, said Filan right now. I mean, come on, the judges have to see the SEC is just playing hardball and stalling right now. Moving on. MoneyGram rolls out crypto to cash service on Stellar Network. Again, Stellar's basically a fork of Ripple anyway. So, I mean, I'm still bullish on XLM and Stellar. Love it. And they're also partnering up with Ripple to help Novati launch the Australian stablecoin, AUDC, which is nice as well. Dallas headquartered money transfer company, MoneyGram, has announced the launch of the crypto to cash service partnership with Stellar Development Foundation, which is nice. The service has been rolled out in several major remittance markets, including the Philippines and the US. It is expected to launch in more countries by the end of the year. Users will be able to convert fiat currencies such as US dollars to, or euros into cryptocurrency tokens. As reported by YouTube, you today, you today, you today, the Ripple revival officially joined forces with MoneyGram last October in order to pilot instant cryptocurrency transfers with the help of Circles USDC. Uh, stablecoin, the second biggest dollar peg stablecoin, went live on the Stellar network back in Ju February 2021. MoneyGram and Stellar started working on the joint project last March. Now that the service has been launched several countries after months of testing, it is expected to boost financial inclusion in areas with unbanked people. And I like that as well. I think that's really necessary right now. Keep an eye on this as well. Again, Stellar is incredibly undervalued, I believe. Anyway, let's move along here. Jack Dorsey is building Web 5. Web 5. It's hilarious because um, I think Snoop Dogg just came out and said he was building Web 6. It's just crazy. So Block Inc. is looking to bypass Web3 entirely and focus on a new Bitcoin-centric model for identity management. Blockchain subsidiary TBE, so sorry, TBD has announced plans to build a new decentralized web centered around a Bitcoin BTC, underscoring founders Jack Dorsey's belief that the largest blockchain network will play a major role in the internet's evolution. And I agree with that. The project is called Web5, represents the latest Bitcoin-centric endeavor to be pursued by Dorsey since stepping down of CEO of Twitter. Interesting. In November, whereas Web3 incorporates blockchain technology and tokenization to decentralize the internet, Web5 is being envisioned to be as an identity-based system that only allows, uh, sorry, only utilizes one blockchain, Bitcoin. Twitter user um, Namikos broke down the concept of Web5 in a series of tweets that describe several software components working together to enhance the user's experience and enable decentralized identity management. Web 5 right now is going to be absolutely insane. You've got Web 2, Web 3. Where's Web 4? I don't know. Pretty much, guys, we're all going to become you know part of the matrix, which we already are anyway, if anyone hasn't noticed. Anyway, moving on to some other news right now. This is the XRP Ledger live, literally live as we speak. This is what's happening right now. It's really cool to see this actually working and the transaction fees are absolutely minuscule. I love that. 
This is what banks want. They don't want to pay massive fees to transfer money across the world. And if I click one of these transactions, you can actually see the, uh, the, the fee. Let me hang on, just go here. Sorry, created, created, created. I did this before, here we go. No, you can't even actually click it. It's not working. Don't know why, but you can actually see the fees right there when you click them into it. Anyway, it has the addresses and everything, but look at that, 0.009 XRP, 0.01 XRP, 0.05. This is what banks want. They don't want massive fees. So this is why they're so bullish on it. Moving on, uh, inflation, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's happened, obviously, the reason why all markets are down today. Bitcoin dips about $500 after inflation comes in hotter than expected in May. Unbelievable. The Consumer Price Index CPI was up 8.6% on the year-over-year -year basis in May, topping expectations of 8.2. Read the following April's 8.3 core CPI, which strips down energy and food, dipped uh, from April 6.2 to 6, but that was higher than expectations too, with 5.9 forecasted right there. Consumer Price Index, the most widely tracked benchmark for inflation, rose 8.6%. On a year-over-year -year basis, he made topping expectations that would decline to 8.2. From April's 8.3, the core CPI, which strips out food and energy costs, rose 6% year-over-year. In May, dipping to April's 6.2%, uh, but more than expectations of 5.9. It's just insane what's happening with inflation right now. It is so high, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. Look at this. Look at that 8.6. It's just crazy. How can people afford to live right now? The cost of living is ridiculous. Fuel, food, gross, just everything in general. Energy prices, crazy. I mean, and not only that, interest rates are being, you know, being put up, you know, by the Federal Reserve here in Australia, and I'm sure in the United States, interest rates are going up as well. How are people supposed to survive? How are people suppo supposed to survive? They need a hedge against inflation. For me, that is Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Well, Bitcoin in particular, mainly. I mean, because it's outperformed at literally any asset for the last 10 years. So again, I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm still holding my Bitcoin. I think it is a hedge against inflation. Most importantly as well, it doesn't incur any additional interest from banks. Um, it's portable. You can take it anywhere. Just like Michael Saylor said anyway. doesn't incur property taxes either. Just mental. Like It's just crazy to see what's happening in the world. I think this is intentional. They're doing all this so everyone can be solely reliant on governments and we will own nothing and you will be happy. That's the plan right there. That's what I think is happening as well. Everything is just keeping to go up as well. We'll get into some other stuff about petrol and fuel as well. Here's cryptometer.io. Let me refresh this to see where the money has been flowing. Wait for it to reload. You've got BNB, Ethereum, Link, USDC, TUSD as well. TRX, XCM, VR, ELT, Sun, ANC, and MANA, I believe that was. Let's just refresh this right now. AVAX, Cardano. I think Cardano is incredibly undervalued, just saying. I've seen some pretty crazy price predictions about that. Let's go to Twitter right now. Have a listen to this. This is bullish as anything about Ripple. Have a listen to this. Let me talk a little bit more about how we're using this and why it's important to us. You might be asking, why does this really matter to us as a bank? Well, we operate in more than 50 countries as a, corp as, a, as, a, as a bank around the world. So more than 50 countries have branches and operations, and we have to move money between all of those operations every day, and significant amounts of money. We've got a number of multinational corporates um, that operate across all of those. So there are huge liquidity flows occurring every day. Um, today... For many of us, we may have to go through kind of swift um, and incur charges. Um, many intermediary banks are part of that. And typically, an SLA for fund transfer movements is between one and three days. You know, using technology such as Ripple, we can get that down to something like 30 seconds, uh, which is significantly different uh, and at a cheaper cost as well. So it's not just the time saving, but the cost as well in terms of moving uh, money between our branches, between you know, our different countries, within our network, that's really important to us. We have solutions to do this today, of course, um, but we're always looking at how we can kind of bring them up to date, make them more efficient, more effective, because by reducing the, the kind of operating costs for a bank, uh, we, can, you know, uh, we can reduce our costs, compete more effectively in the market. So this is a really important use case for us. Ripple's one of the solutions that we're considering, not the only one, um, but one that works. It works. Ripple works. XRP works. 
This is why I'm so bullish on it. Follow the money. Do your research with this stuff. Anyway, plan B, patience. Here's Bitcoin. Predicted to go to $100,000, ladies and gentlemen. That will happen. Just give it time. You need to think long term here. You can't think short term with Bitcoin. It's just getting started. There's adoption happening everywhere. Moving on, you've got breaking. Luxury retailer Farfetch will accept Bitcoin for payments. That's awesome. And again, this is interesting as well. <laughs> Reminder to everybody, this is from John E. Deaton. Legend, mate. Thank you for all your help in this case as well. Understanding all the legal terminology. Under no circumstances should anyone contact any person associated with the case, the judges, the clerks, court reporters, uh, witness, uh, witnesses or lawyers are off limits. If you feel compelled to explain your situation, please send it to me and we'll discuss it right now. Don't do that. Don't contact anybody from the case. If you're looking to do that, don't do that. Stay away from them because you'll probably just cheese them off. You don't want that. You'll piss them off. Don't do it. Anyway, Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index is sitting at 15. I've got an itchy nose again. I don't know why every Saturday this happens. It's crazy. Uh, you've got Abra will launch a credit card with crypto rewards on the American Express Network. That's bullish as well. Moving on. It's a club right here. There's a little emblem right there. You can see it. Look at it right there. The 2020, uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. All the big boys there. There you go. Anyway. This is why I love crypto because it's decentralized. Only 9.9% 9, 9 .9 of Bitcoin circulating supply is held on centralized exchanges. The lowest level since two, December 2018. Get your cryptos off exchanges, especially Bitcoin right now. Oh, sorry, I don't know why my nose is itchy. Sorry about that. The emails were accessed by Empower Oversight. This is bullish as well, which made public SEC documents detailing improper conduct by some officials concerning the Ripple lawsuit. Heyman was warned about a potential conflict of interest with his previous employer. The SEC is in trouble with this stuff. Central banks should steer clear of proof of work protocols when designing CBDCs. Interesting. Uh, you've got XRP, the chosen one right here. Go watch that interview with Brad Garlinghouse. It's legendary. Cynthia Loomis right here. Money supply matters, a painful economics lesson ex uh, exacted by government uh, on people who can least afford bear market to added cost. Inflation, 8.6. That's just insane right now. This is uh, Stella Lumens. Money Graham and SDF announced that the rollout of a pioneering global crypto to cash service on the Stella network, the live service allows users to convert cash to end uh, to an end from crypto at participating MoneyGram locations. That's awesome as well. XRP, the standard. Look at all the banks right here, ladies and gentlemen. You've got Westpac, you've got NAB, you've got ATB, Standard Chartered, UBS, UniCredit, all the big banks. Santander as well, which I'm a shareholder of. There you go. Follow the money. Kathy Wood will be launching a monthly Bitcoin report. I reckon she's awesome. That's that's incredible. I'll read that every single month. The number of link delay active addresses has increased by two times in the past 24 hours. MasterCard CEO, we want to uh, make buying and selling crypto easy as possible. Of course they do. They want a piece of the pie. I see crypto winter as an opportunity to double down and go extra hard in crypto. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to do your research with crypto as well during these quiet times. That's facts right there. There's institu uh, institutional investor right there in regards to that XRPL quote. The SEC has filed a letter requesting that the court seal a portion of Exhibit A to the Ripple defendants' latest filing regarding the insufficiency of the SEC's responses to the fourth set of requests for admission. The Ripple does not object. Again, they just keep hiding stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on right here, Ripple is getting around at consensus 2021 or 2022. They're everywhere at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. They've got booths absolutely all over the place. There's the NFTs right there on the XRP ledger as well. Let me know in the comments below if you actually hold one of those. XDC is a combination of XRP, Ethereum, and VET. XDC is a finance-grade token built to for the capital market. It will be leveraged with many use cases. Current circulating supply is much less than $12 billion. Based off supply and demand, the market size, X XDC could be the to leading token of value right now. That's crazy. And I, I love XDC. I'm so bullish on it. Sinfin as well. Trade finance is a massive industry. Anyway, moving on to coin market cap today. And again, yes, that's my portfolio. Let's have a look at the total market cap. $1.19 trillion, $67 billion in volume, 46% BTC, 17% Ethereum, 19,800 cryptocurrencies now. Most of these, ladies and gentlemen, will disappear, and that's facts. If we go to my favorite watch list right now, the utility coins are where I'm focusing most of my attention on right now because this is where 
institutional money is going to be flowing through right here through these projects. That's facts. XRP, 38 cents USD. Stellar's at 13 cents. Algorand, 37 cents. Hedera, 8 cents. Massive governance board with Hedera. IOTA's at 32 cents. Quant, $61 USD. XDC is a gem at three cents right now. I am not sleeping on that, filling my bags every single week with these cryptos. I love these ones. And of course, Bitcoin is the OG in my portfolio, sitting at 29,000 USD today as well. Some other ones I'm bullish on, of course, VeChain, one of those, uh, obviously Gala, Reef as well, I'm bullish on, XYO. I think um, this game right here, Veracity, definitely one from I'm bullish on as well. Star Atlas. I've seen some pretty insane price predictions of this at least going to $10, if not $7. So again, I think it'll go a lot higher than that once they release this game as well. So I'm bullish on that as well. This is my entire portfolio on your screen right now. All right, that's pretty much it for Saturday's market update. We'll speak to you in the comments and the community tab. Make sure you smash the subscribe button. Subscribe to the Twitter page and my Instagram page as well. I like talking with people on there as well. Stay safe, everyone. Have a good Saturday. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Peace, bye.